Thank you very much. So uh, uh, I'm Ahmed Hayla and I work at the Morriston Cardiac Center in Wales. Uh, and it is uh, the pleasure to be here with you uh, guys and thanks for the APT for the invite. I have been asked to talk about the role of microcatheters when and how. And I'm pretty sure all of you uh, have used or seen microcatheters. And uh, over here, I'm just going to run through in, in the 10 minutes, I'm going to discuss just uh, the function of the microcatheters and how important it is. And also, I'll, I'll, we'll go through a few cases to highlight the exact uh, mechanism of uh, when to use the microcatheters. So the importance in a complex PCI and uh, CTO, it increases additional support to guide wires and it's also for exchange wires and also prevent uh, the entangling of certain wires uh, in the stent or in calcium and prevent damage to the coronary arteries from the CTO wires. And importantly, uh, sometimes you use it for tip injection, either for complex or non-complex. Uh, sometimes you could use it just to deliver some medication to the tip of the, uh, of the microcatheter. And sometimes it highlights the distal uh, size of the artery if you want to. It's not advisable to use it in uh, um, the CTO unless if you use a carolina. And also, if you're really unlucky and you have perforated a, a coronary, it's very useful as well to use it in coil, uh, coiling or fat embolization. So I'm just going to go through, as you know, there is about 8% of the uh, failure of the CTOs because the the, the, the CTO wires cannot actually cross. So with the help of the microcatheters, you overcome certain problems. And the, you could classify the microcatheters into whatever you like. It's in anatomical, a strategical, or you could just go by the tip uh, of the microcatheter. So taper tip and uh, straight tip and or dual lumen catheter. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just give you an example of a case which I used two microcatheters, uh, and this is an 83 years old gentleman who has admitted with non ST elevation MI, now an ischemic heart disease, previous PCI to the RCA many years ago, and type 2 diabetes. His ECG showed non specific ECG changes, but troponin was raised, and normal FPC and renal function, and good LV function. So you do an angiogram, as you could expect, given the age, which is the highest risk, really. You see that lump of calcium at the terminal left main, as well as a heavily calcified tortuous uh, LAD. And at some point, you see the flow down the, uh, the LAD is actually not TIMI3. And there are subtotally occluded distal in, the, in distal LAD. And I think with the right, for the interest of time, I didn't put it. So there is some collaterals into that. So this is a case which you probably see in your daily, I don't know if you see it in a daily basis, but uh, it's a quite complex. It's a, a patient who, if you would use a syntax score, this will be favoring surgery over PCI. Or you could argue is this medical treatment. So this patient was taken into the, to the heart team to make a decision, which sometimes they do not actually make decision. They just make it a bit more difficult. So out of all of you, who would think this would be for medical treatment, surgery, or PCI? Can you show another view? Can you show? Well, you have, well I'll, I'll see. Yeah. That's another view. Here you go. Yeah, but Is that impressive? Yeah. OK, so, so there. So what would you do? Yes? yes, I would agree. That's, that's, if your syntax score would be favoring surgery over this, because he's got a good LV, he's an old uh, gentleman, and he's got terminal left main stem and uh, further disease. But, and that's what the heart team suggested, he should go for surgery. The surgeons, obviously, they were happy to take, but you know the surgeon, they can turn down anyone if they want to. They just need to scare them of the risk and they will never have it. So the patient then seen the surgeon and made their mind that they don't want to have surgery. They will either take PCI or they will go for medical treatment. And, and both are options. Uh, <clears throat> so we decided to go for PCI with the consent that it's a high risk giving the complexity. And as you can see, you would all agree with me that this would require a rotablation. Uh, the new fund 
consider the Angeles and the left mainland MABS a thrombus or a calcification? That's a calcification. Yeah. Yeah. Because the case was non extended, yeah? Yes. The, the troponin was raised, so the calcific it, it, it looks calcified, and as you could see, it will be turned to be calcified because you could just see there is not only just in one area, there is also around the LAD at that tortuous end and down there. So to me, even before you inject the dye, you see heavy calcification in the left main stem and the LAD. So there was no question this was not a calcium. But obviously, sometimes you could be wrong. You just think it's calcium. You go and inflate it, and it is completely. Can you show me uh, intravascular imaging? As well? well, you can't get in. Yeah. yeah. So there is no way. I mean, I agree with you. You could have an ultrasound, but you can't really get in there. So uh, we will see now. Is so. Like this? Hmm? If you approach Kingsway with the imaging catheter, that means that it's really um, like a thrombus. It's just easily, not easily. You, you, what I would agree with you, if you could wire it to start with, then that is, that's the question. It is, it's actually quite difficult because I'm giving you the, the, the difficulties here. Distal left main stem calcification nodule and the bifurcation. There is over there you see the acute calcific Z-bend and then over here you see a, a very tiny channels that goes down the inferior aspect of the LAD. And then you just see it's only that one you could go through. And then afterwards, there is their micro channels, and you just see a retrograde from the right. Uh, and that is, that's all the technical difficulties that you have to navigate to get through them. So I don't think personally that if you put a, if it was easy, if you put a, obviously a sign blue and it then goes all the way through, then you could just put your IVUS catheter and just see. But clearly, you will have to find out now. So that is uh, a VODA um, catheter was into the left main stem to give us a bit more support. This is a sign blue with the uh, term bite classic, just trying to actually go into the uh, coronaries. And despite multiple times trying to wire it, we could not do that. So we eventually gone with the Fielder FC, trying to get into any channels. And as you could see, you cross the left main stem, but then the micro catheter could not actually, it will just take that bend, but it it's actually would not go even further than this. And then we thought that's fine, the macro catheter is there. The best way to do is probably take the macro catheter, it is notched at the calcium, and then replace it, exchange it with the rotor wire, and then rotor blade. And that's, that's the plan, but unfortunately, the rotor wire could not actually go through. The, the, the microcatheter, and I suspect what happened because of the calcification, the tip of the microcatheter collapsed. So we couldn't, so we had to take the entire microcatheter out. And I don't know if you have had an experience of some of the turn bikes, sometimes if you rotate them a lot, you actually could snap the tip and it stays there. And that's a, that's a, a bigger problem by itself. So, so that's what happened to us, that's what we kept it. And obviously, nothing would work, so everything came back. So this time, we tried a different catheter, which is the Elong, which was actually, we, in our first, let's say, two weeks of using these macro catheters, we said, let's give it a try. So we used the 1.7 French of 130 with the, uh, a new wire, which is the uh, Field AFC. And as you can see, it's made a very good progress already. <coughs> and if you see, it is actually making a better progress if you see it on that screen, and the wire actually has gone through. So by the time the macro catheter, it took some time, but even though this is not of a, a torque sort of catheter, it's more of a push, it's like a caravel. So, uh, and it, but it has a three layers, and uh, which one, the top, the, the, the inner one of the layers is actually a PTFE, and the second layer is a stainless steel braided, and then the polymer. So we made some progress, and then the next was just 1.25 per of rotablation. You could just see it took some time just to cross, and, and that just demonstrates clearly a calcification. Not a, you could just see, despite all this, and here you go, that, that next gone. And then afterwards uh, is a straightforward, so sequential balloon inflations, IVUS, requiring shockwave, so we had to do shockwave to, especially for the left main stem, so I had to do 
a two fight in the LAD and then a three fight in the in the left main and uh, and then afterwards we just that was the final uh, result of the of this case so next case is uh, a, uh, ten percent. That's what we quoted in ten percent. Ask me the evidence. I don't know. We just said we just like ten percent the number. Uh, I, I have to be very honest because the surgeon has already quoted the risk of about five percent. Yeah, because it's of age, I think, rather than anything else. In the normal circumstances, the risk would be a three percent per surgeon, one to three. But because of age, it's quoted. I, After the rotablation, we post dilate usually. The, the way I do it, I will post dilate with the two, five, and a three, and then IVUS, and then size the shock wave based on the uh, lumen of the actual artery. Because in such cases, uh, even uh, with uh, very good uh, post dilation, uh, because of uh, um, IV prevent and calcification, even It is quite bulky, the shockwave balloon, and that's why you would advocate post-dilatation with the non-compliant balloon first before you actually get your shockwave. Otherwise, you might not be able to, to get it if you take it straight after the rotor. That, that, that's my, or, or the alternative things to upsize the burr from <clears throat> 1.25 to 1.5 and then do it again. But the cost in UK is more or less the same. They cost the same, so it's easier to use a shockwave. Now, this is a, 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 a 73 years old gentleman, diabetic, hypertension, hypercholesterolemic, with a history of asthma, has been having an intractable angina despite maximum anti-anginal therapy. Uh, this is really important here, yeah? the maximum anti-anginal. Now, with the complex PCI and CTO, since the ischemia trial has come, majority of the people will just say, do nothing, just... So you have to document that the patient is already on more than one anti-anginal to justify your um, procedure. And uh, mild LV systolic function injection fraction 45 and obesity. So uh, this is just the sh setup shot. Um, there are multiple shots, but in the interest of time, I only just show in the, where the money is. So that's your approximal RCA occlusion, and you've got the... Uh, the LADs and obstructed with lots of collaterals into the right coronary artery. So uh, I tried to go anti-grade with the uh, 2.6 of an uh, elong catheter there in the, in the beginning and tried. My, the usually when I do anti-grade wire escalation is I'll try with the fielder XTA and if it doesn't work then a Gladius EX, then the Gaia group and then you move on to the uh, confidence that if you want to. So I tried with the Field XDA didn't make any progress, and then with the um, field XD, it's just going, as you could see there, going sub in different projection. And eventually, I decided to go retrograde, so I went with a Caravelle, which is another use of your microcatheter. And you could use the same thing, the Elong 1.7, which is a smaller, actually, than Caravelle. And I managed to get through into, into here, and then, uh, as I'm not going to go through the details of the reverse cart on, on, on the um, mid RCA, proximal RCA, and, uh, and then I got the anti-grade, which is the 2.6, the Elon catheter, all the way down there, and then the rest was the angio, uh, I'm just gonna go through this quickly, and stent, an Ivus, and uh, that's the final uh, result of the right coronary artery. Uh, now, this is a really interesting case. You may agree or not with me, but this is a 56 years old gentleman who is been having chest pain and shortness of breath, mainly when he exert himself. Past medical history of nothing really. He's a non-smoker, quite fit and active. His ECG, however, showed a biphasic T wave changes on the anterior leads. And his troponin has risen from 230 to 290, troponin I specific, and that's his echocardiography. It's showing no regional wall motion abnormalities. And if you agree with me, it's a very good LV function. And uh, so the next thing was, 
Well, that's what we usually do. A troponin raised with a chest pain patient goes to have an angiography. And that is his angiogram. So you could see the angiogram short left main stem. There is a, a left circumflex, a lady. Looks okay, really, on some of the views. But if you were Greek, something coming out of the left main, which is here, and it going down there. So we actually didn't know what it was. Is that a branch? Is that coronary pulmonary fistula? Is washing out at the end? But is this related to the actual uh, case? So we did a CT scan to highlight this a bit more. Uh, and one of the radiologists didn't actually pick it up. So it, we, we couldn't tell us exactly what it was about from the angiography that is potential fistula, but not sure. So we did an MRI scan just to find that there is no other causes like uh, myxomas or whatever it needs to be. And it was absolutely fine. There is no scar. So we, the interventional uh, vascular radiologist, actually looked into it again. And then we decided that this is actually uh, a fistula. And I think when the patient is exercising, it gets like a steel phenomena and then become ischemic and gets the pain. And that's the actual cause. That's your CT scan showing it. And then the use of microcatheter, we use... Cantana macro catheter of 2.5 was a cock medical, they all come in package. And that is one of the uses for micro catheter. We deploy a few uh, coils in there, the cock coils. And that's, that's, that was the final, uh, the final result was excellent. So this is my summary. So if you're gonna go anti-grade approach for CTO, you could either or ADR, then your best choice if you're using these Elon catheters, it's 1.9 or 2.6 or 1.7. The one thing I do like about the 1.7, they have about 170 centimeter. So cases which we have struggled previously, like a Lima to RCA, is, uh, is really useful because you're, you don't run up to off length. They're quite lengthy, so they can come through the Lima all the way to where you want them to be. And uh, that's it. Thank you very much. That's my, uh, my team. <clears throat> Happy to take any questions if there is. Even though you already asked many questions, but it's okay. Well, I'll be very honest. You have to use them to appreciate the, the use of the microcatheter. Because we are used to so many of microcatheter, you know, the... All the, we, we usually use a term bike and we use the uh, Corsair and Corsair Pro and they work absolutely fine. And then when you use these ones, one thing is you, you just see them like a, to be honest, like a small little plastic tube, but in the t top of them is, is uh, stainless steel braided. So they kind of penetrate very easy. And that's, that's my experience. And I think if you, you have to use them to appreciate the difference. That's the way. One thing about the, the 1.7 uh, is the smallest, and it is a straight tip. So <clears throat> it, it's like a caravel. We use it for fat embolization sometimes if there is any perforation. We've used it once, and it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's very good. There is nothing else I can say. But, I mean, you have to use multiple multi-catheters or microcatheters to appreciate the difference between each. Clearly, you have to have more than one. You can't just rely on one single microcatheter in your lab because of... But I found the term by classic, personally, it's, it's really good and straightforward. If you have a heavily calcified, I get worried I snap the tip of the, of the microcatheter.